All right, everyone, this uh, follows uh, the Bannon story and also sort of the story of multiple commentators from online that I'm familiar with, uh, several people, Lauren Southern among others, now being banned from traveling to different nations. Like I think uh, she got uh, prevented from traveling to Australia or something or New Zealand. I thought that was very funny. Uh, what you see is that the establishment is telling normie culture, like the normie West. We've got to stop extremism, we've got to stop totalitarians, and in order to do that, they're adopting totalitarian strategies. Uh, I would point this out. Back during the uh, so-called War on Terror, which is roughly the same kind of fear-mongering that we see now with the war on the alt-media, um, what were some of the tactics used? The police state tactics. The increase in government power... Uh, in order to abuse the entire population, led by opportunists that have no uh, actual reason to keep you safe, uh, and using the excuse, oh, well, there's armies of uh, jihadists that are trying to kill us, so we've got to invade several countries. We've got to spy on your library records. We've got to censor the information you can see. We've got to tell you what you can and cannot put on the radio. And it's all a bunch of bullshit. It's like post-Patriot Act nonsense. None of it kept us, uh, kept us safer. Attacks continued. The most common sense solutions to the problem were always ignored and in fact called xenophobic at the time. We see the same thing now. For every instance where someone is actually legitimately bigoted or potentially violent, you have a hundred cases of people being slandered as though they were despite the fact that that is not in fact the case. And you see the same rough strategies being used. Look, the denigration of the First Amendment, saying, well, there are certain opinions people just shouldn't have, but instead of the government, this time it's big tech that's coming in to try to squish out people's opinions. And be it known, of course, this is for fiscal reasons, they wouldn't be doing that at all if there wasn't a profit motive involved. It's for branding purposes or to avoid being attacked, having their sponsors and their advertisers attacked uh, by lynch mobs of uh, moral busybodies. Uh, the freedom of the press. We do uh, have a problem with free press in this country, but it's not the corporate press. When people say, well, for instance, Trump is going after free press. No, he's not. He's just criticizing people he feels are putting out fake news. The alt media is really the one that's being suppressed because, again, it's reliant in part upon technological firms that are very, very susceptible to moral outrage. As opposed to me, like CNN, like it'd be difficult to boycott and target all their advertisers. It can happen, but it's you know, very difficult. With an online tech firm, it's like more geared towards communication anyway. becomes a little bit easier for them to be pressured by some idiot NGO. We see certainly a decline in the right to privacy. We see doxing has taken hold. Uh, we see now the freedom of movement of people is being restricted on a, a fairly large scale. Basically, if you have the wrong opinions, you can't visit our country. Because under some rule, we can keep you out. I think Spencer was in Poland and not allowed to like get on a flight to Sweden or something uh, the other day as well. And it's like, you don't have to like someone's opinion. You should still believe that they, have, that they should have access to the basics of being a dignified human being, the ability to travel around. If they're, if they're not being violent, breaking some law, they're not literally terroristic in nature. It's like there's no legitimate reason to keep them from going wherever they want to go. Um, it's sort of a little bit like blasphemy laws. We even sort of have that at this point in the West. You know, try to criticize certain religious movements, uh, especially on a political basis. Like, oh, you criticized the Pope uh, because he said, you know, build bridges instead of walls. Well, you're, you know, you're xenophobic or you're against Jesus. I literally see people in the establishment referring to Jesus and being like, well, Jesus was a refugee. Jesus immigrated multiple times to escape persecution. Therefore, somehow this has relevance to U.S. case law now 2,000 years later. I, get the, I see this every single day. People are being intimidated. You have cases where people are being physically attacked, like with the Bannon case. He's being harassed in a public place. Uh, and, and, you know, the owner's like, well, you know, I can't have this in my business. Number one, it looks bad. Number two, I don't want it to escalate. I'm calling the cops. And then they get targeted. It's just a lynch mob of shrieking banshees. Uh, it's moral haranguing. It's temperance era bullshit. And it's feeding right into the totalitarian's plan because what they want, what they want fundamentally is to censor people. They'll make sure to aim it pri primarily at the right at first so that the left will allow them to do that, so that they'll have some public support. As long as it looks like a partisan issue, it can slowly then creep in. Once it's fully implemented, they will then aim it back at the left. 
they'll pretend, well, we, you know, in retrospect, we've got to be even-handed, but the censorship's already there. And pretty soon we're going to have nothing but a bland, cloying, politically correct, bullshit, corporatized internet run by a handful of unaccountable monopolies that will numb your mind and fucking stick their fingers in your ear and wiggle it around in your brain and turn it into mush. That's essentially what will happen. We will have a tech totalitarianism. That's what we'll end up having within the next, you know, decade if we lose. It's imperative that the alt media fights this, uh, like fighting Article 13 over in the EU, fighting against any censorship here. We should be fighting to render these groups into public utilities, which at first I opposed, but it's, it's become imperative to do so. Since Congress is clearly not going to get off its ass and do its job and pass a constitutional amendment, reaffirming the First Amendment rights and the Fourth Amendment rights of at least Americans on the Internet, which quite clearly is the case. Since it's clear the Supreme Court's not going to get involved and do that, it becomes imperative that we use legislative action to turn these monopolistic firms variously into public utilities. That's my opinion anyway. At this point, we have no other option. The free market can't fix it. If you've got domain registrars, You've got uh, uh, massive firms that can literally buy up or destroy and deplatform competitors. You've, you've got a, a situation where a competing site can be destroyed by a larger site through a third party at a whim simply because they have more money. That's not capitalism. It should be. It should be capitalistic, but it isn't. It's corporatistic. It's monopolistic, hegemonic. There's a difference. I keep trying to correct people when they think that capitalism is the big corporation prevents all competition. No, capitalism is competition. It thrives on it. It requires the freedom of competition. If there's an absence of competition, it cannot be capitalism because that's the very backbone of capitalism. If it's absent, it's a corrupted variant of, of a for-profit system, but it's not capitalistic anymore. It's something else. It's corporatism. It's an oligarchy. So that's what we need to do. Governments love totalitarianism. Don't let these people that claim to be, well, I'm a liberal, I'm a conservative. No, you're a totalitarian. You just disagree on what aspects of people's lives you need to tyrannize the most. That's the only real difference. Um, we can easily solve this problem with a constitutional amendment. What we should have done is uh, prevent Obama from giving away the Internet to the world at large. That's part of the problem. If it were solely and strictly held by the United States under co our Constitution, it'd be a little bit easier to deal with this. We could free up the legal resources of the U.S. to combat foreign uh, attempts at these. Now, how is it any different? How is the meme law from the EU any different than a blasphemy law from Saudi Arabia uh, if the Saudis were to attempt to export it to, like, U.S. firms and force them to abide by their rules? What's the difference? It's still, it's based on people's opinions and material that they're posting in, a, in an incoherent manner. There is no difference. There's the secret. But they don't want you to notice that. That's about all. Peace out.